Conductor Daryl Oney has conducted numerous orchestras encompassing a wide range of repertoire and concert formats throughout the United States. His credits go beyond the podium. He is also an arranger and composer, having written over 30 arrangements for orchestras and smaller ensembles. Recently, Oney brought his talents to the FM area as a finalist in the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony Orchestra Conductor Search. Get the frog, get the frog! Da, 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 yeah. The first time I ever heard uh, orchestral symphonic music was when I was in college. Good, good, that's it, yep. And it was a recording of a Mahler symphony. I mean, the range of emotion was already great, but on top of it, the range of color was even more outstanding. It was as if I was living in a world of black and white and a world of color just opened up to me. Bravo! I was born in Chicago. I was a math major and two years into my major is when I um, decided I wanted to learn something more about music. And they said, well, we're testing for, for uh, students to place them in levels of theory, so come for the test uh, tomorrow. So. I came and I took the test and uh, turned out that I got the highest score of anybody uh, who took the test. Loved theory so much that I changed my major from math to um, theory composition. From there, there on, uh, as all music majors have to do, they all have to take a beginning conducting class. I took the class and when I was finished, I still remember the instructor coming up to me and said, well, what would you think about going into conducting? You know, you're, you have a nice fluid technique, good ears, you can hear things. And uh, I think you kind of planted a seed. Hey, retake these. Da, da. Da, da, da. Good. And go, go. Molto, molto. With younger people, the more uh, variety of music they get to hear, I think that's better because they're still forming their opinions of, of you know, what is the music that they like. One, and one, and two, and one! Yeah, almost, almost. You just have to get off there and get as quick as you can, Violas. I know you, you got to play that and get ready and find the note. One more time, one more time. And one, and two, and one, and two, and bam! Ah, bravo, bravo. That's what we need. That's exactly what we need. I think that uh, most conductors, you know, if you ask them when they first start out uh, what they want to do with their conducting career, they'd always probably say something along the lines of, well, I'd love to be the conductor of the New York Philharmonic. And uh, I think that's probably true at the very beginning, but as you conduct and you get various opportunities, then you start to find the area that you're the most comfortable in and the area that you think you could make the most impact in. Mine was more uh, working with the, the smaller orchestras. For me, what interests me about an orchestra, besides the, the music, and of course it's wonderful, the music is wonderful, but it's the people that you're working with. If you're working with a board of directors and a staff and within a community that has a certain kind of connection with the orchestra, it makes all the difference. With the uh, smaller orchestras, you get that kind of uh, vibe where the, the board of directors, when you talk to the people that are on there, they're on it because they love music. Bella's going to be coming out and she's going to be doing the uh, Brook uh, Violin Concerto No. 1 in G minor. And the best thing I can say about it is that it's one of the most popular of the violin concertos. Um, very contemplative uh, uh, first movement with high energy in the middle of it. The second movement is just beautiful. It's just beautiful. In fact, uh, Bella is commenting that it's her favorite second movement among uh, violin concertos because it's just so tuneful. As a conductor, 
Our job is that when we stand up in front of the orchestra for the first rehearsal that you have to have unchallengeable knowledge about the piece. Hopefully by the time I've gone through all this and I have this knowledge in my head then I'm ready for that first rehearsal to, to bring that uh, picture that I have in my mind now of this piece uh, into you know, sonic reality. Obviously we want to present things that are popular and things that people will want to buy tickets for. We want to do performances that we as, a, as an organization feel good about and proud about, so we don't want to bite off more than we can chew, you know, and we want to do things that will show us in the best light. Part of uh, my thinking in, in programming is, is for the orchestra too, it's for the future, it's to make the orchestra better. So you have to pick repertoire that makes us better because then that's going to make it to the point down the road where, okay, now those pieces that we said is off limits, we can do now. The Fargo-Moorhead Symphony is searching for its next music director. This season, our Masterworks concerts will each be led by one of the five finalists. The decision of who will be the next artistic leader will involve valuable input from the orchestra musicians, audience members, symphony supporters, students, and members of the community, including you. The countdown begins. Who will be the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony's next conductor? Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Humanities Council, a nonprofit, independent state partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities. The North Dakota Council on the Arts. And by the members of Prairie Public.